Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Louise Archer and I'm a Polar Bears International Research Fellow at the University of Toronto Scarborough. And I'm speaking to you here from Svalbard, Norway. And you can see some of our team in the background. We're here for our long-term polar bear maternal den study. We're studying the behavior of polar bear mothers and their cubs as they emerge from the dens. It's a really special time right now here in Svalbard um, because it's the time that polar bear mothers um, will be leading their cubs out of the den. So in this region, we find polar bear mothers will build these dens under the snow, right on the steep slopes of mountainous area. You can kind of see the terrain here, very, very steep. You get a lot of nice snow drifting. Female polar bears in the fall will dig into this deep snow. They'll form a den. They'll give birth to these tiny, tiny cubs. They're only about 600 grams, so just over a pound, in the middle of winter, kind of December into January. And because these cubs are so small, they can't deal with the temperatures outside. Um, the den itself is much warmer. It's a nice stable temperature. It protects the cubs as they stay and grow on their mother's rich milk. So by the time they leave the den, three to four months later, they're about 20 times larger. They're furry. They're able to deal with these really cold conditions that you can see here. So it's a very, very important time for polar bear mothers and cubs. And it's a time that we've been studying here in Svalbard by deploying camera systems to capture footage of mothers and cubs on those first few moments when they emerge from the den. So you can see our team here is, is um, installing a, a site. So we're doing a test run for a project. But we have a recent study that was published in the Journal of Wildlife Management uh, coming out on International Polar Bear Day. And this gives uh, some of the first results from this project. So what we do is in the springtime, so typically late February, our team will identify locations where polar bear mothers that have been fitted with satellite collars have entered a den. We'll identify where that den site is. We'll approach the kind of final kilometer or so to the den on ski or by foot. We'll install remote cameras facing where we think the den site is. So looking up at that slope, we'll leave the cameras in place, go away, and then record footage um, of the, the mother and the cub as they take their first moments outside the den. And the kind of results we saw from this study, some of the key questions we wanted to look at was, first of all, what are bears doing when they come out of the den? What's the family doing? Are they staying around in the area? We know they tend to stay around for, for a few days or for a few weeks before they beeline it out to the sea ice. We're looking at the kind of behaviors that they're showing. And then the kind of final thing we really wanted to see was, could we identify signals of different behaviors from these satellite collars that the females are wearing? That would give us a really good tool to be able to, to monitor bears remotely and, and see these kinds of denning related behaviors. So some interesting things we found in the study were bears were very different. So each family kind of had a different story. One polar bear family, they came out of the den and they spent only two days hanging around the den site, allowing the cubs to acclimatize, and then they headed back out to the sea ice. Another family stayed for a full month after first popping out of the den. So they were in and out of the den, the cubs were getting used to the outside environment, um, and then a month later, they took off. On average, bears stayed for about 12 days in and around the den site before departing to the, to the sea ice. And we saw some evidence that bears may be leaving a little bit earlier than has previously been seen in Svalbard. So that's something we're looking at continuing monitoring to understand is this an emerging trend, maybe in response to the environmental changes we've seen in this region with rapid climate warming. We also developed a new tool to be able to better monitor bears by combining pictures taken by our cameras with data from satellite collars worn by the denning bears we are able to pick out signals of different behaviors like when the mom is out of the den, when she's moving around, and when she's finally departed from the denning area. So this we hope will be a really valuable tool that managers, researchers can use to, to more accurately um, pick out these kinds of key behaviors because we know this period is really important for subsequent cub survival. So it's an important time for us to be able to monitor more accurately. And of course, as the Arctic warms, we have more human activity moving in, so it's really important we're able to monitor bears, give them the best chance um, at survival during this denning time and, and hopefully give the new generation of polar bears a chance to thrive as well. 
So if you're interested in supporting polar bear mums and cubs, you can look at some of the activities and content that Polar Bears International have on our website for International Polar Bear Day, the 27th of February. So if you go online to polarbears.org, you'll see we have some um, live content. We've got some activities. We'll also have uh, media on our social channels. Um, so have a look online, see what kind of things we're, we're showing. We're going to be giving you updates from our ongoing field study here in Svalbard. We're continuing to build out our data set and try and learn a little bit more about mums and cubs during this important time. So that's all for me now, but I uh, hope to speak to you again soon and be sure to keep an eye out for, for our study as well.